Now recently the salinity of this aquarium has creeped up to about 0.028. Now at 0.028, the fish are spending too much of their energy on their osmoregulation system. Now the osmoregulation system is the system that balances the salt within the fish's body to the environment because the salinity of a fish is about half seawater. So they need to employ the osmoregulation system in order to, um, to protect themselves against the salt in the water. Now, because they've cracked out with a little bit of white spot, I would consider using various products that are reef safe to discourage white spot, um, which may help. Um, I would lower the salinity. I would get the salinity down, say two, three degrees a day until I get down to 0 0.020. I don't want to go down too fast because I don't want to go shock the corals. And I also find that if I get the salinity down to 0 0.020, I generally don't lose coral. As long as I start seeing improvements in my fish, I then start to raise the salinity again until I slowly get it back to 0 0.024, 0 0.025, where both of them should be happy. But if I let the salinity get too high, I get osmoregulation systems with issues with the fish. If I let the salinity get too low and I keep it too low, I'll start losing coral. Now, the first coral I tend to lose is SPS corals, but various corals have got um, different tolerances to lower salinity. And the less period of time that the fish are exposed to lower salinity, the more likely everything's gonna be okay. So the key is to get the salinity down to 0 0.020, start seeing improvements in your fish, then slowly bring the salinity back up again. Now, if I thought the fish were actually gonna die, which in this case, I am concerned about the fish because they are showing absolute signs of white spot. But other than that, they pretty much look like pretty strong, tough, robust fish and they've been getting fed high quality foods in regards to that spectrum probiotics over there. Now, if I looked at the fish and I thought they were gonna die, if they were smashing themselves on the rocks, if they were swimming really erratically, if they were breathing heavily, if they were freaking out and panicking, I would then look at putting them in a quarantine tank. Now, the advantage of putting them in a quarantine tank is we can drop the salinity instantly and we don't have to be stressed about the corals. We can also use non-reef safe medications that are more effective, such as copper. So we can treat the white spot more effectively in a quarantine tank. Now the disadvantage of doing that is it's very stressful for the fish. And this is a very large tank, which is at capacity. So trying to manage all those fish in this little tank is gonna be very challenging. So you'd have to do lots of regular water changes, lots of water tests, and it would actually be quite a lot of work to maintain those fish. And there's more fish than you think in this tank in here for a period of time. Now, the other thing is I do not, I was, uh, I attended a aquarium veterinary conference um, just recently. And a lot of people believe that if they quarantine their fish you know, do tank transfer method or any of these methods which are highly proven to be very successful way of reducing pathogens in your aquarium and a very, very good idea to do. Quarantining fish before you put them into your main tank is an excellent idea, but some people seem to think that getting a tank with no pathogens is an aim. But though it is technically maybe vaguely possible it is very unrealistic and very unlikely because pathogens run on various life cycles, but let's say you're gonna do tank transfer method or any of these methods, let's say you take the fish out of here, put them in here, treat them with copper, do whatever you're gonna do, then you may very well save the fish, but once you finish your quarantine program or your medication program, you're gonna put the fish back into this tank again, and then there's no way of guaranteeing that you've actually got all the pathogens because some of the pathogens actually lie dormant in the fish and not all the pathogens react exactly the same and have exactly the same life cycle. So there's various quarantine procedures you can do that are a very good idea 
and they absolutely increase your chance of success. But trying to think that you're going to run a tank with absolutely no pathogens is an unrealistic expectation for most people. Once again, you can get new pathogens into your aquarium through water. You can get new pathogens into your aquarium through any rocks or corals you add. Um, so introducing an aquarium with no pathogens is an unrealistic expectation for most people. In most cases, as long as the fish have got good immune systems, you don't let the salinity run too high. You're feeding them good foods. The antibodies that the fish possess are more than enough to keep the fish healthy and happy. And at the end of the day, if you have a quarantine tank and you think your fish are going to die, absolutely and totally use the quarantine tank. If it's like this and the fish are just not looking 100%, it was less stressful for the fish to lower the salinity in the tank, keep an eye on the fish. Once the fish are happy, slowly raise the salinity again. Chances are you won't lose any corals. Chances are the immune system of the fish will bounce back and chances are everything is okay. But once again, you have to be guided by your own gut instinct and you have to be guided by your own experience and you have to react to what you're actually seeing in the tank but the long and short of it is if the fish are happy healthy and established in a tank like that i would only move them to a quarantine tank if i actually thought they were gonna die anyway put your opinion on the bottom of this video and um, let us know any experience that you've had with um, removing fish out of display tanks and putting them into quarantine tanks when has it worked or when has it not worked for you